Hello, everyone. It's a pleasure to be back with you for part six of the Metric Minute, brought to you by Vault Performance. I'm Kareem Durkawi, and this time we'll wrap up our discussion on concentric impulse by examining how it relates to body mass. As you recall, impulse is determined just like calculating the area of a shape. However, it yields only an absolute value of applied force without considering its effect on an object. We need to consider the relative effect of a given force to understand the outcomes. Imagine if we gave the same amount of fuel to identical cars, but one of them needed to move lots of heavy bricks. The added mass decreases fuel efficiency. In other words, the same tank of gas is now less effective and can't take the car as far. It's the same for athletes. Greater body mass dilutes the benefits of an applied force during a vertical jump. In this example, a 350 pound lineman produced an impulse of 412, whereas a 190 pound receiver produced only 266. However, since the receiver's weight to concentric impulse ratio was higher, he had a better vertical jump and did well in other key performance indicators. The take home message is that a higher concentric impulse is always desirable, but performance programs should aim to achieve a force to mass ratio that's most appropriate for a given sport or position. Next time we'll discuss the landing phase and start talking about how to view the force time curve as a whole rather than individual segments. Until then, please feel free to touch base with me or any of us at Vault Performance. Thank you. The world of strength and conditioning is filled with some awesome practitioners who are always trying to evolve and continue to grow professionally throughout their career. The problem with many of us, though, is finding a new outlet, a new way and a new perspective on the questions that we may have, whether it be programming, whether it be situational with dealing with coaches, or whether it be career advice. Because all too often what happens is we get stuck in with the same group of friends and the same group of colleagues that we reach out to for advice repeatedly over and over again. But what we should really be looking for is different perspectives different people who have been through different situations who can help us make better decisions both for ourselves and our athletes. And one awesome place to start with that is the forums in the Strength Coach Network. In the forums in the Strength Coach Network, you'll be able to reach out and get feedback, input, and advice from coaches from all over the world. From everything from career advice to training modalities to programming, there's people there just for the same reason as you are, to try to get better, to learn, to share information, and to grow the field of strength and conditioning. So hop on over to strengthcoachnetwork.com slash cvasps, that's strengthcoachnetwork.com slash cvasps to dive into all that great content today and get your 48-hour trial for only a dollar. I look forward to seeing you in the Strength Coach Network. Hey, what's happening, everybody? Jay DeVeo coming at you with this week's edition of My Thoughts Monday. And this week, I want to talk about something that pops its head up, you know, every now and then in the world of strength and conditioning, and especially all over the internet when, when you start to, to look at things. And that is what actually is going on when we're looking at compensation packages and things of that nature. Where we actually stand in some of those things that, that may be going on. But I say this because every now and then you see people post like a retweet or repost or whatever, a job position that's open. It's like, oh, well, this job needs a master's degree and it only pays twenty-four dollars to $35,000 or whatever it may be. Meanwhile, we don't know the backstory to that position, right? We don't know what's truly going on at that institution. And we don't know everything that's involved with the responsibilities of that position. I say that as an old head. I say that as Graybeard. I say that as someone who took a job for $1,000 a month and was working with like 11 teams, including football, and loved every second of it. Now, I'm not sitting here and saying, oh, pay your dues and back in the day and all that crap. No, I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is I think that we go to these knee-jerk reactions because there are some things that seem they haven't changed and appear that they haven't improved when in fact they really have. Back in the day, let me just give you our example here at the institution I get to work at. When I was hired, there were two full-time positions. One that was primarily involved with basketball and had a few other teams and not like smaller teams, like had baseball and women's soccer. There was the director and then there was the part-time or 
paid intern position that I took. So now we look at that and that part-time paid intern position I had and then soccer, field hockey, swimming and diving. I helped with football. I had both tennises. Uh, I helped with women's soccer. I helped with baseball and I helped with track and field. It was a lot, you know? So people look at that and they say that when they now say, well, they have a position open that is for, you know, a part-time position that's only for like $1,200 a month or whatever it might be. People look at that and they say, oh, well, we're not moving forward. We're still undercompensated. We're still this, we're still that. We're still in a terrible place. But what they don't see is that that position that I had has now turned into two full-time positions. And that part-time position has increased their pay by 25%. Now, do I think that we're at where we should be when it comes to compensation packages? No. Do I think that we can still get better and be treated better and have better earnings and the whole nine yards and be able to have less responsibilities for what some people are compensated? Yes. But as we sit here and we look at these positions and we say, oh, that entry level position only makes $30,000 a year. That's garbage. That's why I got out of the field 10, 15, 20 years ago. I don't think that's necessarily fair because even the toughest positions that they may be, for the most part, do not carry the same level of quote unquote responsibilities when it comes to team quantity wise that they did back in my day. Now, again, this isn't some puff my chest out, you know, kids are soft, stop whining, talk. What this is, is a discussion about how far we've come and where we're going. Listen, we're still super young in the world of sports. We're still super duper naive in what we even can provide at times. And we sit here and we fight and we argue and we throw stones at schools and groups of people and sport coaches who actually are being pretty helpful if you think about it as to where we were before. Again, I'm super lucky. I've been at the same school for, this is year 17. And I know like that I'm a dinosaur, not just in the field being 41 years old, beat up and God, just awful beaten down looking like I am right now. But I've also seen the growth of the program here and the growth of the programs in the league that we play in and the growth of the programs that are local. We like to argue and we like to say that it's bad that sport coaches may have their quote unquote guy or gal, their person that they bring with them or they hire or they ask to have a person. But that's also a person who's added to the staff. That's another job that's added to the field. And more often than not, whether you like it or not, those are also the positions that are getting paid better. Not all of them, let's make that certain. That's not a guarantee, right? That if you get hired as a quote unquote basketball guy or the quote unquote football guy or the ice hockey guy or whatever sport is pulling in their strength coach, that does not necessarily mean that you are going to be compensated greatly or handsomely or whatever term we're using now for that. But what it does mean is that's another position. What that does mean is that's at least one more team that someone else doesn't have to work with. What that does mean is that's assisted us in decreasing the external responsibilities outside working with that one group. And what that does mean as it's moving us more forward towards the positions we have. So I get it. There are some positions at some institutions that should be, be compensated better. There are some positions at some institutions that still may be behind the times in that. 
But before we start bashing all these schools and what these people are doing to try to increase the opportunities available for people, let's not sit here and say that this is awful, that is awful, the other thing is awful, and the people that are doing this are awful because we don't know what else is going on. If we're adding positions, for example, like the conversation I had with a coach, they added a position. They added a paid internship that was going to allow someone to get their foot in the door, start coaching, and get paid. Because remember, we also want to argue that interns shouldn't work for free. So now they find a way to pay interns for all in reality, like pretty decent, but it's not good enough. And you're a bad person because you don't pay them enough. That's not right. There's no new position that's going to be created that all of a sudden as a entry level job is going to make fifty, a hundred thousand dollars. It's just not going to happen. That's just the reality of it. And we need to sit here and take a step back and go, Hey, wait a minute. So they had six people on staff. They had three people on staff. They had two people on staff and the school is willing to add someone to help out and to be part of it and to get involved in this great profession that we get to work in. Sure. At the beginning, it's not great. Sure. At the time it starts, compensation isn't great. But if there's an opportunity for that position to grow, if there's an opportunity to add a position, if there's an opportunity to continue to evolve and they're showing that they're going to start to evolve and add and build to the staffs and the packages we have, why are we so bitter about it? Why? Yes, there are some discrepancies in compensation. Yes, there are some people who make a ton of money and their assistants don't make anything close to it. And yes, that may be an issue to some people. But if those people have gone through the steps and done the work to get to where they're at, I don't think you can blame them. And I don't think you can blame the people who are trying to open more positions and find ways to hire more people and find ways to get more people into this field if the compensation package isn't exactly what you think it should be. Because at the end of the day, they're providing a chance, they've added a position, and hoping, in hope, that that's going to grow. So when we sit here and we start posting jobs and we're like, oh, that job's not fair, that job's not fair, this is awful, these are awful. Maybe we need to take a step back and look at the entire situation so that we know, hey, you know what? It's not ideal. It's not perfect, but it's better than it was in 2004. So we are moving forward. It doesn't mean we need to stop and be like, yay, we got everything we need. No, we need to keep pushing forward. But let's not start attacking people because they're only provided so much to give to someone or they've worked so hard to find the opportunity to give someone something else because you don't like it. And that's just my two cents on the topic because I think that there are a lot of people that are fighting to help to grow the profession and to get more people involved. And I think that at times people are jerks to them because they don't understand everything going on. But that's just me. But as always, truly appreciate everything you do for us here at Central Virginia Sport Performance. We'll be back next week another My Thoughts Monday. See you then.